on this episode. It is the point of no return. You you have to really hold on to the table right now because this we're going into crazy town. But it's all good because afterwards we're all going to be like. <laughs> but then suddenly, box. Just a little thing. And suddenly like, oh, what is happening? Which we are going to solve in the most mind-blowing technique yet. <laughs> mm hmm Hi everybody, welcome. I am Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy. And this is gonna be a little tutorial on how to make your own shmup from, from scratch. This is episode number 10 already. And finally, today, it happens. It ends today. We are going to learn how to make multiple, multiple bullets. We have, the last episode, we have learned how to make uh, state machines. That's good. We have the start screen. We have the game screen. We have the game over screen. That's good. And we can switch between the different states. It's awesome. But we want to have multiple bullets. And we don't have them right now. When you press a button, the old bullet disappears and a new bullet appears. We want to have uh, be tracking multiple objects at the same time. And some of you already finished this. Some of, of you of you have already accomplished this, and that's great. That's great. But I'm gonna show you. Um, uh, we're gonna redo this from scratch. I'm gonna show you how I would do this. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to tackle. We're gonna tackle the truth about about our update function. Is it update function? No, actually, I wanted to go into the... Uh, things have changed. We moved around a lot of stuff and it will take a little bit to get used to this. Uh, yeah, I want to go in here and in, into the star, uh, into the uh, start game function where we create the stars. Something I don't like about... There's something I don't like about this way of tracking multiple objects because the stars are kind of like the bullets and at the end of the star of the of the uh, episode when we did the stars, one of the doggy zone challenges was to use this technique to make bullets. That's something that you can pull off definitely. But uh, for anybody who tried this, you probably maybe run into a lot of difficulties. One big difficulty is already with something we saw with the with, with the stars. Whenever we want to track some new property of the star, for example, we had position okay, but then we want to have each star to have a different speed. We would have to create a whole new, a whole new table, a whole new array to track that stars. And then all of the code that creates stars, for example, had to be like expanded and everywhere, everything had to be like, like every new property would add so much complexity to our program. That's not great. There's another problem that maybe you notice if you ever tried to delete bullets. Uh, you don't have to delete the bullets, you can just keep them around and create like <laughs> hundreds of bullets. Eventually it will cause some problems, but you know, at least for a while you have, it works. Uh, but if you want to delete bullets, you kind of have to get into a problem as well. Um, I already talked uh, in the array episode how you can delete things from an array. You know, you just go del star x. Uh, and then six, for example, that's okay. You can delete an entry from an array, just uh, basically the opposite of the add function here. But if you ever do that, you kind of like uh, run into problems if you had multiple entries with the same number. Hmm. So if your array looked like this, right? This is your array. And let's say you want to re delete this six. How are you going to do this? Uh, because if you run this, if you run this code, it won't delete this six that you want. It will delete the first six, actually. It, if there's multiple entries that that all match this, they, it will always delete the first entry. And uh, maybe you actually want to delete some, some entry down the line. Oh, it doesn't always pro create problems, but when it creates problems, it's a nightmare. When these three, three arrays get out of sync with each other then the bullets start like woo, making crazy it's it's mm, it gets mm, that's not good that's not a good solution yeah it's not a good solution which means i have to introduce you to a new concept a new idea a completely revolutionary concept and that concept is the idea of objects objects we are going to talk about object oriented programming you might have heard that concept, object-oriented programming. A lot of uh, object-oriented programming is something I see a lot of people learn in computer science class, right? Like that's, that's, that's a typical programming thing to learn. It's, it's very difficult, difficult to wrap your head around. And But all of the computer science people t say like, oh, it's the best thing. And then you always see those these over-eager people 
coming from computer science classes and they try to make everything with object-oriented programming. Uh, th there's good reasons to use object-oriented object programming. They, we're definitely going to use it today, but not in its full extent. Object-oriented programming is a rabbit hole. We're not going to go too deep in a rabbit hole. We're just going to, you know, maybe dip a foot inside and then that's it. What is an object? Well, an object is basically the same thing as an array a little bit. This, the, the idea is that we're going to create like a compound variable, that a variable that consists of smaller variables. We already talked about how basically the list is a way of like taking a bunch of variables and duct taping them together. And in our case, a list of variables, kind of like a stringing them out in a daisy chain kind of pattern, right? Um, a, a, an object is kind of like a clump of variables. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to like create an image. Like you take a bunch of variables and literally stick them together and they kind of like create like an object of variables, basically. Let me show you kind of like, like what I mean. Right now we have three different uh, arrays, right? We have the three different arrays that all describe the same thing. What if we, we, we didn't have like three different arrays? What if we had just one array and inside that array would be, let's say little clumps of variables, little objects and each object would describe a star. What if we had an array of stars instead of an array of star X, an array of star Y and an array of star SP? Just one array and inside the array there would be a whole bunch of little information packages and each of the packages would describe a single star. Let me show it, show it to you. Let's just create a star object. Star now we're going to use the, the, the twirly bracket and that's confusing because it's confusing because it's, it looks like an array, but it's not an array. Star curly bracket opened, star curly bracket closed. Okay, so far the same thing has opened. And now here inside we can do something like x equals 40, y equals 60, and then speed equals 1.2. This is different from the, what we had before. Before we had something like uh, a list or, or like a, a table, right? Let's say the list would be something like just a number, like, like a sequence of numbers, right? Something like this. That would be, a, that's how we learned arrays so far. But this is different, right? This is now, you have like variables inside this, right? You have the little variable definitions x equals 40, y equals 60, SPD um, equals 1.2, inside the, the curly brackets that usually and so far defined an array. So you have like, an, like a big, kind of like an array of variable definitions. <laughs> and this creates a star object. And now something we can do is we can, we can access these, these little packages by typing the name of the object star dot x for example and we can set it to a different value star x equals 60. The dot allows us to get into an object and and access one of its properties. These are basically properties of an object. We have a star object and that star object has x property, y property and speed property inside the star object and you can access this, up, this property by typing star dot property name and then you can set values to this, you can get them out, you can print them on a screen and so forth. Another analogy for objects that I like to use is that of a character sheet. Um, so if you've ever played a pen and paper RPG, you know these um, character sheets that you fill out. These are these pieces of paper that describe characters for your game. And each sheet has like slots for different properties like strength, intelligence, dexterity, and so on. Well, objects are kind of like character sheets. So if you ever made an RPG in Pico 8, uh, the properties of your characters would probably be saved in an object. Uh, but objects can be also like character sheets that describe whatever you want, not just characters. In our case, we are basically going to create character sheets for our stars. Let me, let me show you this in, in action because right now we are just like typing stuff, but I actually want to show off how this looks. I'm going to take this out. Uh, this is also not necessary. Um, and then here in the init function, we're just going to create our little star object. 
And then here in a draw function, in a draw start function. Let's do the draw start function. Uh, we're gonna delete, uh, quote out the, the my ocean schmap thing. I'm just gonna print the star object. Print star uh, x. I'm just gonna print my screen. I'm gonna see what happens. There we go, 40. Let me put it a little bit more more centered so we can see what happens. Right? We can access the property x from star. Star x equals 40, right? And you can go star dot x equals uh, 45, and it will be 45. You can set it to 70, it's gonna be set to 70. You can change the y value as well. I'm gonna print the y value. Uh, further down maybe. Right, 4070. That's how you can access the properties of our little star object. 70. And now, of course, you can, and that's kind of like the idea here, is you can actually uh, draw the, an object on the screen. Basically, you can draw something on the screen that is driven by the data inside an object. Um, and that's kind of like very important to, um, to, to differentiate. This is an object, yes, this is an object. We call that an object, a programming object. But it's not a visible object. It's not something like it's on the screen somewhere, right? It's just like a, an object means that it is multiple variables duct taped to each other a little bit. That is a, a thing that exists that has multiple properties and each of the properties is a variable. It's not a thing on the screen, but we can make it a thing on the screen. We can uh, start drawing things on the screen that are driven by, the, by those objects. Uh, the way we had you know, here, things drawn on the screen driven by a bunch of arrays. We can do that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to do this with this one object that we created here, the star object, a single object that we have so far. Uh, so we're going to do p set star dot x star dot y, and we're going to we're going to turn it white for now. And there it is, there it is. There's the one little star driven by the data inside our inside our our star object. So if I set it to hundred, it will be all the way down here, hundred twenty, almost at the edge of the screen. If I set it to just one, it will be all the way up. So far, so good, but that is not necessarily revolutionary. Why, like, because, you know, you could also have like star underscore y, right? That's, that's just a variable or a star y, right? Or a star bob. <laughs> you could have a variable and create just a bunch of variables and draw the, the star based on the variables. It's just like basically a more complicated variable so far. The twist and the reason why we're learning those objects is that we can now create an array of objects. And that's what we're talking about. A list of little clumps of information and each of the clumps contains all of the data necessary to draw a star. And that allows us to just have one array, not multiple arrays like here, not like an array for each thing, but just one single array. And that array just contains the stars. And not just like an array for X, an array for Y, an array for each property separately. So that's kind of like a different way of organizing the same information. And you can see the advantage here um, as well that you can then easily expand the information package uh, that describes the star. You can have a color. Uh, you can add more properties to, to this little object uh, without having to create more arrays. That's the, the whole idea. Now, before we move there, I also want to show you something that is a bit crazy. And that is the fact that, and this is a bit, uh, you, you have to really hold on to the table right now because this we're going into crazy town. This is the reason why objects are a bit... Objects. Objects exist independently of the variable name that you assign them to. Objects exist independently of the variable name that you assign them to. 
yeah, that's a bit wild. So I thought I'm gonna do a little drawing in, in paint to kind of like maybe illustrate what I mean. Um, so uh, I'm gonna draw a variable here and I'm gonna draw the variable like uh, as if it was a cup. I'm gonna use an image of a cup of a mug, of a coffee mug um, as the image for what a variable is. And I'm gonna call this coffee mug or this variable, I'm gonna co call it A, right? And we're gonna, when we say A equals five in Pico 8, let's just gonna say five. Um, when we do that, what basically happens is we're going to take a five and we're going to put the five inside the variable. So the variable has a five in it now, and then you can then use the variable to manipulate the five and change it and whatever. And so yeah, the, the five is inside the variable. That's kind of like the image that I want to convey here. That's not quite how uh, objects work. So an object is maybe something like a cloud, you know? Uh, floating in the sky and it has like all sorts of numbers inside but yeah that's an object uh, and when we create an object and we say the variable is equals the object um, the object doesn't go into the variable because it's a cloud floating in the sky right uh, that's the image that I'm creating here what actually actually happens is a, it's a reference uh, we kind of have like a tether between the variable and the object right and that, that reference is what's inside the variable uh, and, you know, the, the, the difference here is that now what can happen is you can have actually multiple variable names that are tethered to the same object. So something like this, right? Now we have a second variable here and that's not going to be sec in the variable A, that's going to be variable B. And let's go variable B, there we go. And that variable can be also tethered to the same object. All right, so now what happened is we have one object that is tethered to variable A and variable B. And what it will look like now is that um, you make some changes with variable A, you would manipulate something with variable A, and now suddenly, magically, a variable B will be also changed, like because they're both tethered to the same object underneath. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, I'm gonna create a very simple, actually, I'm gonna uh, create a, a, something like this. Um, so I'm gonna create a blue star, uh, a red, or let, let's say a red star uh, here. Uh, color eight, right? Star red, okay? I'm gonna create a star red. Uh, not interested in this, not interested in this. Okay, I created a little object here. I'm gonna draw this on the screen. So here, when I'm printing it, I'm gonna go star, uh, no, actually, let's remove this. Star underscore red, star underscore red, uh, star underscore red dot call. Now we're taking the color of the star from the property call of that object, right? Red star, perfect. Now I'm going to create a second star that is going to be blue. Star blue. And it's going to be here, uh, 12. I'm going to make sure, uh, so I set the color to 12. I'm going to make sure it's a different position, let's say 80. And then maybe a different X position as well, uh, let's say 50. Now it's not visible now <laughs> because we're not drawing it. We're just drawing the red star, right? I'm going to later on use a for next loop, but for now, we're just going to do a two separate blue, uh, statements here. Star blue, star blue, star blue. Perfect. Here's something that's weird. Those two uh, stars <clears throat> exist kind of independently of the name we have given them. If I'm going to say star blue, equals star red. We only see the red star. We're drawing the red star actually twice right now. And I mean, that makes sense, you know, right? If we have a, we have, we have, we have red and we set it to five and we have blue and we set it to seven, then if you go blue equals red, then what you should get out is you know, uh, blue should be uh, five, and red should be also five, right? That that's, that 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 just makes sense. Like red starts with five, blue starts with seven. But we, then we take whatever, like we delete the in constants of blue, and we replace we replace with constants of five, 
and they're both set of five. The problem here is that if we afterwards, if we're going to say blue equals blue plus one, right, something like this, then blue is going to be six and red is, will remain five. Red just has, still has five and blue had five in it after, after this, after this blue was set to five. But then we're going to take blue, whatever was in blue and set it to six. Not so much here. Not so much here. Here, that object that was assigned to red is now also assigned to blue. Those two variable names point to the same object. And if we made changes to the blue object, those changes will be also applied to the object that is, uh, that is assigned to red. So for example, if we're going to go star underscore blue dot x plus uh, equals star underscore blue dot x uh, plus 20. We just add 20 pixels to the to the blue star. It still only shows you one red star. We're not only moving the blue star, we're also moving the red star. We're moving both stars at the same time. Let me let, just like to, to, to draft up the point. I'm going to actually print the, the stuff on the screen, right? I'm going to go print star uh, red.x and I'm going to print start red.y. Uh, uh, blue. 60, 60. Both are at a position 60. I'm going to add 25. Both are at 65. Although we're only changing the, the blue star, we're only adding, we're only changing the parameter of the blue star, we think. But the problem is underneath, under the surface, those stars exist independently, they're just floating in your computer. And when we are assigning an object to a variable name, we're creating kind of like a pointer. We're saying like, okay, this name now is associated with this floating object. And we can have multiple names that all point to the same object. This is what we're happening here. Red and blue are pointing all to the object that is, that is here, to the, the object that is, has color red. And this association with the second object that we created here, this is the second object, that was severed when we said like, you know, now I want to take this object and associate it with the, with the blue name. All right, so just so we are on the same page, I'm going to create a little drawing to illustrate kind of like what just happened. Maybe you kind of like you are a, a visual learner, maybe you need to kind of like this graph. Uh, so again, I'm going to use this metaphor of a uh, cup of a coffee mug that is really, really bad redrawn. And I'm going to uh, kind of like show what we we just did there. So we created two variables. One of the variables was created uh, was was named a star red. I'm just gonna write red in here, and the other one was called blue. Right, and everything was peachy. And then we created um, two objects. Actually, we created two objects. I'm gonna uh, illustrate them as having you know as being just those clouds in the sky. And then we assigned each of the object to its own variable. Uh, as I already said, like they are basically the um, variables are tethered to objects. The objects are not necessarily in the variables inside, but they're tethered to them. And everything was peachy. Uh, but then what we did is we said like, um, whatever is in red, put that into blue. We ju just said like blue equals red, right? And uh, that changed dramatically the thing that happened. Well, uh, that, that tether between um, the blue variable and its object that was severed. We didn't have that, that, that tether didn't exist anymore all of a sudden. Uh, and what we did is we basically, we said whatever is in red, put that in blue. Well, in red, uh, there is just a tether to the object. So we just like basically said, okay, tether blue to the same object that red is tethered to already. And so, and, and, and this object that was already tethered to blue, that kind of like, uh, disappears like that that was out of the picture now and so now we have two variables that are tethered to the same object and that's the scenario I was talking about changing things through the red variable will also change kind of like seemingly change um, the blue variable as well uh, but that's because they're underneath they're basically changing the same object
and uh, we are going to talk about you know when this makes a difference when when this comes up. I just wanted you like if you don't quite like what, if you don't quite follow this, that's okay. I just want to keep you in mind that this is this is a, a, the, the the object behaves slightly different than you would expect it from variables like here. That's why the variables are kind of like the fundamental building blocks. The, the numbers, strings, and and true or false. These are kind of like fundamental variables. They work in a certain way. Uh, they are being assigned by value, whereas objects are always assigned by reference. This is something that we call by reference which means the object, the actual contents of the variable kind of like doesn't, it's not inside the cup, but it floats in space. And what's inside the cup is kind of like, just like a reference, just a pointer to the object that exists somewhere else. By reference. Okay, so far so good. Now let us turn our star function. Let us turn our star function into something that is driven by objects. All right, let us just rewrite this. We're going to have an array. I'm just going to like keep this around, but we're just going to create a new uh, array. We're going to go stars equals empty. And this is going to be an array of stars. One array to rule, rule them all. Uh, one array for all of our star purposes. And we're just going to do the same for loop that we had here. The same for loop. Except here inside the for loop, I'm going to create an object and I'm going to use a helper variable for this, a local helper variable. We already had that kind of like this idea. I'm going to go local new star, a little variable that exists only within this loop. That's why it's local. It only exists within this loop. And I'm going to give it uh, an empty object. This is an empty object. It's also an empty array. And I haven't talked about this, but don't be confused a bit, uh, uh, too much about this. This is Lua. This is this programming language of Pico 18 specifically. It kind of under the surface, actually, objects and lists and arrays are kind of like the same thing. Um, but for now, we can just treat them as they're actually different things. So I'm going to create an empty object called new star. It's, so far, there's just nothing in our little uh, data package. And we can go like new star. Uh, something we can also do, we can just create a property by just starting naming it like a variable. So for example, new star dot x equals. And then we're going to take this one out. We're just going to, we just create an empty object and we're going to start giving it some properties. New star dot x equals uh, this thing. Cool. New star dot y. Again, we're just going to give it a new property. And then new star uh, dot SPD, the speed of the star. This time we're going to uh, give it this little thing here. Bam. Perfect. Perfect. So now we have created a star and the star has three properties. And now we're going to put that star in our star array. Do you remember? We have the, the stars array. All right, we're gonna add, we just added to the to the, our, the, our, the array. We're gonna go add stars, new star. We're gonna we create a little, little package of information called new star. And we're shoving that package into, into uh, the array. So far, so good. Ah, I'm making a mistake. I'm, I ran this, but now we had like this little experiment with the star red and star blue. I'm gonna delete this little experiment. So far, nothing changes because we are not actually using, uh, we are not driving our star drawing with this stars, with this stars array. So I want to actually do this. So let's first start with the update function. Let's see. Where here's where we animate the stars. Ah, all right. I now remember we did all of this in in tab number one in this tools uh, tab. So let's do now the animate the stars. And it kind of starts in the same way. This is the old way of doing this, but now we're going to have to do, do the new way of doing this. We're going to go for i equals one to a hashtag stars and the number of stars. So we have to do the same thing. 
Now we had this little helper variable here and we're actually gonna use the same type of helper variable. We're gonna do something like local my star equals stars square bracket i. Same same thing here. I mean that it was called sy here, but I'm just gonna call it my star now. A bit longer maybe, but but you know. And then I can do something like, okay, um, here, for example, the Y should get increased by the speed. And I can do this now. And as you can see, previously we had to access a different array that we not actually, like, it was like weird. We have to like pull information from different arrays, but now we're pulling inf information from the same object. That's the same object from the MyStar object. All of the information that we need is encapsulated in, in the object that we pulled from the array. So we can go something like MyStar, MyStar. <laughs> dot y equals my star dot y plus my star dot spd it's all my star and then we're gonna go if my star uh dot y is greater than 128 then that's that's this statement here my star dot y equals my star dot y minus 128. Same thing as here. Here's something that is weird and that's 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 the difference now. That's the difference between variables, between just like the regular numbers and so forth, and objects. You see here where we have to write the variable back into the array, right? We have to like, because we, we take the, the number out of the array, we manipulate the number and we have to write it back. Because of the reference thing I was talking about, because of the thing that where objects exist in independently of the names, we don't actually have to write it back. Because we did manipulation of the object here. We manipulated the properties of the object. So those properties, you know, these are about the object that exists independently of the names. We don't have to write it somehow back to an array. It's already inside the array. All right, just a little illustration to kind of like visualize what's happening here. So uh, first I'm gonna draw the little, uh, the little stars array that we have now. So all of our stars are objects now. And again, we're gonna use this image of a, of a cloud. We have a little, little array of clouds. We have a bunch of clouds now and all of, each of the clouds represents one star, right? And um, so we created them and they're just floating there, but to organize them, to be able to access them, we created a, well, I don't know how to visualize an array. I'm just going to create like a very, very wide mug. It's, it's a wide boy mug <laughs> and it's going to be called stars. Star. And you know, uh, uh, there were some questions about this um, when I published the uh, first version of the video. People were confused about it. it's just just a normal array like before. You know, uh, previously we just had numbers in arrays, but now instead of the numbers, uh, we have uh, we have the objects inside, or more specifically, we have references to the objects. We have the tethers to the objects. All of the objects are tethered to this giant mug, this giant variable uh, called stars, or this this array called stars and we can access uh, all of the little objects through the array. But now something that we did inside the loop is we created a little little helper variable because we can use the stars, we can use the stars array always, um, but it's a bit easier, a bit simpler if we create a little helper variable called my star. Man, writing <laughs> with a mouse is really difficult, especially since I have acceleration on, this is really funny. So we created this little variable my star and we're kind of like exploiting the fact, this little property of the objects that I was talking about, and we're kind of taking advantage of it. Um, so inside the loop, we set the my star um, to the first entry in the array. And what that does is it actually, you know, it, it just creates like a reference to the first object. It creates like a tether to the first object. Now the first object in the array is inside the array, but it's also inside this little variable at the same time. And then we, you know, we manipulate, you know, we get some data from it. We put some data back in. We did some manipulation with this first object. And then the loop is over and we sever this connection. And then we pick the second object from the array like this. 
and so forth. And then, you know, again, there's communication back and forth. We do we do manipulation and so forth. We do our stuff and so forth. And then at the end, you know, the, again, the communication is severed. Uh, we don't longer need this. And then we, you know, we pick the third object and so forth. So the loop goes through each of the objects, creates a little connection to the uh, to the my star variable and the object, and then there's some manipulation happening. And then at the end, we can just sever it and 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 leave our objects be. And then you know, at the at the end of the thing, the variable disappears because it was a local variable, and we are just left with the array. This array still exists, and the connection, the tethers to the array still exist, and the objects have been manipulated through our variable. And so we don't have to put them like back in the array. They always were in an array. They never left the array. Uh, we just like did the manipulations through a different means, through a different variable name, and not through the stars variable, but through the uh, my star variable. I'm gonna delete this. Um, you can, if you're afraid that we're gonna break something and you wanna go back, you can, you know, oops. Uh, you, you can quote it out like this, something like this, right? Uh, we 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 did that for for oh, oh. like this. That's good. Something you can do. Um, but I'm gonna actually delete this. It's fine. I'm 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 bold. I think we can we can move over to this to this new object world reality. So now I just have to uh, rewrite the drawing of the stars. That's something that also we're gonna do. Um, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to loop through all of the stars and then see what's happening. So, okay. Um, so first, I'm going to actually do this thing again where we take a local variable, my star, and we pull a star from the array and we're going to just assign this variable to the same object from this, from this, from this array. Um, now we're going to do the s call, uh, the local variable that temporarily uh, stores the color of the star that we're going to draw. And then we're going to go, you know, go through this entire thing. So if my star uh, dot spd is smaller than one, then s call equals uh, one. And then I just, I'm just going to copy this out. I'm just going to copy this out uh, and then just going to replace this star spd dot no, square bracket i we're just going to replace it with my star dot spd and then this is the actual drawing of the star and that's something that we just did so we're just going to go p set my star dot x and then my star dot y and then s call this is the little helper variable that we created again to calculate kind of like the um the color of the star right all right so i can just delete this old stuff and now we rewrote our star field to work with objects now it's th this is a bit of a disappointing situation i know because we are kind of like it just looks the same Okay, we we just just did the same thing now. It's n now the same thing now, but it's now different underneath. But I just like went through this process kind of like to show showcase, you know, how the same thing, how the three different arrays have now turned into a single array uh, that just uses objects. Let's run this. Perfect. Okay, so 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 just like to because this is something that will come up over and over again. All the time, all the time, we're going to have an array and it contain, contains objects and we're going to draw the object on the screen and then in the update function, we're going to also uh, manipulate the objects, uh, the contents of the objects. So we are, um, we're just going to repeat this entire process, but now for the bullets. This works a bit differently. When I press the button, I want to create a bullet object and I want to put it in a bullet array. So we, we don't have a bullet array. We have to create a bullet array. And we're going to just create an empty bullet array. We're going to call it bulls. Bulls. Bullets. Now I'm going to go to the update function when we actually press the, the fire button, right? You remember, you have ball X and SFX and so forth. This is where, when we press the button, I want to put a new object in the bulls array. So we're going to create a little helper variable called mybull. 
or let's call it new bull. This is a new bullet. Uh, let's 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 make it empty for now. And again, new bull. This is the the empty object dot. Now we're gonna invent a new property. Let's let's call it x. Uh, I'm sorry, this was me. This was not your, <laughs> this wasn't your um, Windows. Oh my gosh. Let me, can, can I, can I, yeah, I'm gonna just deactivate. <laughs> There's some notification happening in my Windows. I'm sorry. Um, all right, we're gonna set the new ball X to the ship X position. And we're gonna set the new ball Y to the ship Y minus three position. Like so. Delete the previous one. Uh, by the way, just what, because I mean, I'm always doing these confusing things because previously I've shown you something like x equals uh, 6, 5, y equals 7, x. you can do something like this. So we could actually do something like, like this, do it in like in one line, right? Instead of those three lines. This line is equivalent to this line. I just think this is a bit like, in the, especially the beginning, maybe a bit un more understandable, understandable because it uses this dot syntax. I think this dot syntax is kind of nice. Uh, doing it in one line is a bit more compact in, in terms of code, so maybe that's good, but I don't like how it like gets very quickly too long. The lines get very quickly too long and you have to scroll sideways and that's kind of like un unpleasant. Something you can also do is uh, kind of turn it into kind of like a block. So you can um, just add a line break here. That's something that's quite popular. I do it myself quite often. So I just create a new bullet, open uh, curly brackets, then just enter and then continue the definition of the object throughout the next line. And I do like a nice indentation here. So I just have like a whole list of uh, properties of the object in, in under, in, under each other. That's maybe a bit better. There's different ways of doing this. Um, I'm just gonna for now, like don't get too, too confused. So for now, I'm just gonna use this this thing and then maybe later on, we're gonna switch to, um, to a different version of this. But that's, so far that's fine. Defining an X and a Y, very, very simple package, even simpler than the stars for now. Maybe we're gonna have different, more complicated bullets later. All right, so we're gonna create this new bullet and very important, we now have to put the bullet into the bullet array, or the bulls array. So we're gonna go add, Bulls, new bull. Good. Now there's two things that we need to do. First, we're gonna have to um, loop through the bullet array and animate the bullets because they have to fly out. And then second thing is we're gonna have to draw the bullets. Let's do the drawing first. Uh, we're gonna go to the draw function. We're gonna see where we're drawing the bullets. Ah, there he is. There is there's the bullet that we're drawing. Uh, instead of drawing one bullet, we're just gonna draw a lot of bullets. We don't know how. Uh, we're gonna use in uh, four next loops. We're gonna go four i equals one two number of bullets. Hashtag bulls. That's how big their bullet array is. It starts at zero, but it could be you know ten, twenty, hundreds. Do. Okay, and then we're gonna use this helper variable. I think this is always a healthy way of doing this. We're gonna go local my bull equals bulls square bracket i. We're gonna pull a bullet from our, our, our bulls array. And we're gonna draw a sprite, the sprite 16 at my bull dot x, my bull dot y. We're just gonna draw this two properties from the we're going to take it from the from the bullet package and we're going to draw a bullet there and it should actually really work it works now you can see the bullet stay but it works it works so all that is left left to do i'm going to actually copy this for next loop here is we're going to go an update function and we're going to make sure that the bullets are actually flying so again the same thing uh, where are moving the ship, moving the bullets. Now we're gonna do a loop where we loop through all of the bullets. And again, little helper variable, uh, my ball 
equals um, bulls square brackets i. And then we're going to go uh, mybull.y equals mybull.y and then minus 4. It's supposed to move at the speed of 4. Ah, yeah, baby! Woo! <laughs> oh, so good, isn't it? It's, it's so good. Mmm. Mmm. Isn't it good? Doesn't it already feel immediately better? I don't know. I feel already better. Okay, so today we learned about objects. We learned about how objects are little packages of, of data, of information. By the way, so far we only put like numbers in objects, but you can also put strings in objects. You can put other objects inside objects. You can, <laughs> it's, mm, it gets really, really crazy. But yeah, just objects as little bundle of, of information. We learned how to create arrays of objects. We learned how to iterate through an array. That's something that, again, it will come up over and over again. We just loop through an array of objects and we perform operation on those objects. We are adding uh, stuff to objects. Oh, something, I forgot something very important. We are not deleting objects. Maybe that's kind of something that, that's, that we should do now because I don't want to split this into different episodes. Yeah, we are adding bullets, but we're not removing the bullets again. And that's something that we should maybe take care of. Let's, let's do that for, for a second here. I want to, in a draw function, a draw, a draw game function, at the end of the draw game function, I want to actually print the number of bullets uh, like this. Hashtag bullets. I just want to print it in the corner of the screen. You can see it's zero, one, two, three. It, the bullets are still there. They're, they're just like, and uh, you know, at the beginning, it maybe it doesn't matter. But this is a shooter. We're gonna shoot a lot, and so it would be good maybe to remove the bullets when they leave the screen, right? Let's do that maybe. Um, so something you can do here. That's going to be looping through the bullets. We're gonna say, if my bull dot y is smaller than minus eight, minus eight, then delete my bull dot uh, comma, no, delete bulls comma my bull. Right? We're just gonna delete from the array bulls the my bull bullet. If the bullet is going more negative, more upwards than minus eight. I used minus eight because, again, uh, the position of the bullet, uh, the position of a sprite is always the top left corner. Uh, so we need to account for the fact that the bullet has, the, the bullet sprite is has a certain height and that height is eight pixels. So if, um, for example, if the bullet is drawn at coordinate y equals zero, then just the upper row touches the top edge of the screen. You kind of have to wait. You have to move it into negative until until the entire bullet disappears off screen. You don't have to want to remove the bullet too early. So that's why minus eight. Now we can be sure that the bullet is so far off the screen that the entire sprite is actually drawn off screen. And there we can delete the bullet. Let's see if this is going to cause some problems. Just a little thing, and suddenly, like, oh, what is happening? Uh, it's, a, it's a bug. Attempt to index local my ball and nil value. So my ball at some point is nil. What happens? Well, and this is kind of like a problematic thing here. Uh, we are manipulating an array that we are iterating through. And that causes problems with PQ8. So let's say we have two bullets. Let's say we are one of the bullets is actually off screen, then bullet number one. And let's say we delete the first bullet. Now the second bullet becomes the first bullet because it kind of like, you know, the array doesn't want to have gaps in it. So when you delete the first bullet, the second bullet becomes the first bullet. But that's not something that the, the for next loop realizes and it tries to do the code again 
It tries to move the second bullet, but now the second bullet no longer exists. And that's how, how you get the, the error. That's how you get the error. That's why suddenly one of the bullets is nil. Which we deleted the bullet and that created um, a situation where we tried to move a bullet that no longer exists. There is an easy fix for this. There's two easy fixes. I'm, I'm gonna uh, just show you the one that, that I think is, is, is the easier one. Um, it, you can do, we can iterate through the bullet array backwards. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to blow your mind like this, but it's it's like a little, this little trick. If you go backwards through this entire sequence, it works. Because let's say you do the second bullet first, and that's fine. And then you do the first bullet, that bullet disappears. Now the second bullet becomes the first bullet, but that's no longer a problem because we're already finished with this thing. And if the second bullet gets deleted, that's okay, because then we just go to the first bullet and uh, again, no problem. Because then all of the array shifts happening kind of like behind you. <laughs> you kind of like don't manipulate the array that you're about to still go through. Um, so uh, we did that when we did the four next loops. Uh, so we're going to start at the number of bullets that we have. And we're going to go down to one. And we're going to do minus one on every loop. The, the, this counter variable, we're going to go backwards through this entire process. It works the same way. But now deleting the bullets will, won't cause any problem. That's a little, little pro tip right there. That's a little pro tip. There's different ways of doing this. You could also, for example, do like a, if there is no bullet, like if my bullet is set to, to nil, you know, you can, you can say like if my bull equals nil, you know, and then not do anything. But if it's if it's not set to nil, then and you do something. You can just do like a workaround like this, or you could. Um, there's a different type of loop that we'll show you later that we can use instead. It's there's different solutions for this, but I think this is kind of like a simple simple way. All right, so we are creating bullets objects. We are deleting objects. We have objects in a, in a list. We iterate through them forwards and backwards. We are now firmly in object land and we are going to use objects a lot. We are going to use objects in the next episode. But for now, let us move on to the doggy zone. Right, the doggy zone. So um, this was a difficult episode. Don't worry if you're, like, you're struggling a little bit. Don't worry. You do ask questions if you have any. But don't worry, we're going to go through this process more in the next episode. We are just going to create uh, enemies and so forth. And I think once you see this process multiple, playing out multiple times, you will you will kind of like uh, get maybe a better handle on this. For now, I want to see, I want you to experience the awesome power of the objects by expanding our bullet objects a little bit. So right now we are, our bullet objects are kind of like very simple. We only have X and Y. Add more properties. For example, how about you create bullets that uh, have different speeds? How does that look? I don't know. Just try adding different speeds and, and animating the bullets according to different speed. New bull.spd, you know, that, as we had with, with here with the stars. Just try to uh, create this bullet that's fly at different speeds. One thing. Or try, try to create bullets that have different sprites. Maybe they change colors. Maybe they're different colored bullets. Or, and that's kind of like more advanced thing, what about, again, we talked about it, what if the bullets are animated? Uh, you have to have an animation property, like a frame property that gets increased, you know, and so forth. That's a, that's a good challenge too. Another thing is you can do is now, is maybe you can do like a spread shot. Can you pull that off, a spread shot where you fire a bullet in uh, maybe in the center, but also two, two more bullets to the size, like, you know, because now we can create so many bullets, right? So how about creating, you know, just like a mayhem of bullets flying in different directions? That's something that you can try out now as well. I want you to take this concept of objects, uh, especially with the bullets, and start experimenting with this a little bit, trying, having some fun, getting your own experience with the objects. If something breaks, that's okay. Try to figure out what the problem is. Ask around in Discord, ask around in the comments section. We're gonna figure this out. You know, you are reaching the limits. You're, you're testing out the limits of what's possible, and that's good. That's how you learn. This is gonna be it, and now I would give a big thanks to the good people of Coffee who made this episode possible. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much.
And if you aren't a supporter yet, consider a sub or a one-time donation over at Coffee. One of the major perks is that you'll gain access to new episodes of the series earlier, so there's no need to wait. And there's also all sorts of other behind-the-scenes features. Check it out at coffee.com slash lazydevs. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man, our shmup looks beautiful and becomes more beautiful with each episode. Now that we are at the multiple bullets now, it feels like a real shmup. And the only thing that we really, really need is something to actually shoot at. So that's something that will come up in the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.